and welcome to the Tavern Chat Podcast. I am your host, Eric Tenkar, your bartender in the OSR, your main proprietor at the Tenkar's Tavern blog. So, the game plan today had been to sit down with one of the developers of the D20 Pro virtual tabletop software. But uh, there were circumstances beyond either of our control. Uh, we've had to move that to a later date. But I made me think about virtual tabletops. I've been playing with or messing around with or interested in virtual tabletops, VTTs, since before I started blogging in uh, 2009. I have a history with them. Um, Some good, some bad, but I've played with a lot. And I've paid for a lot. So, let's take a, a walk down memory uh, lane and uh, think about some of these uh, uh, virtual tabletops I played with. So, I think the first one that I actually seriously sat down with was Klug from, I think the company was Klug Works, W-E-R-K-S. And it was an ugly, ugly virtual tabletop. The colors were blotty, washed out. It's hard to explain. It wasn't something that looked good on your computer screen, but it worked. And if memory serves me right, it's the only third edition 3X. I don't think I played a full adventure, but I played an encounter. Somebody was nice enough to run an encounter for me, and it was I was a halfling no idea. Rogue fighter. It's been so many years. And, yeah, that didn't go well. But I got to see that the software kind of worked and never used it again. And then there was Screen Monkey. Screen Monkey might still be around. It's a very simple VTT, like Klug. It was a standalone program or a standalone app. Uh, It didn't do much. And I... I really, I never experienced actually gaming with it. Then there was Map Tools. Now, Map Tools is still around, as far as I know. It is free. It has a hell of a learning curve. Back in the day, I did donate uh, towards the development to pay the developers there for their time. It was, uh, it was rough. It did a lot. It really had a lot of features, but it was overwhelming for somebody who, like me, who uh, there's just too many bells and whistles that were not well defined, and the manual was damn near non-existent. Might have been better now. However, it had a great tool attached to it. I believe it was called Token Tool. I really should download it again. It allowed you to turn pretty much any fantasy art or science fiction art into a token for you to do VTT. So I use that in other VTTs. So certainly something to check into as a, as a free way to uh, expand your token base, especially for home games. Next one I tried out and invested in heavily was I tabletop? It was one of the first ones that uh, sh- was going to integrate voice and video into the VTT, but it was built off of, I believe, an uh, uh, like a virtual office type of software package. At one point, I was actually a moderator in the forums. Yeah, go figure that one out. Uh, it's Still around, still kicking in one version or another. I haven't looked at it in a long time. I don't think it really got any traction. That's what it is. Battlegrounds RPG. Now it's the RPG edition. It has a lot of uh, bells and whistles that you can adjust. Not as intuitive as I might like, although it has had decent support. And uh, Herica is a very good developer who is on top of stuff. And he has a great list of 
like all the VTTs out there and other sources. So the Battlegrounds RPG website is probably a decent place to go for a lot of that. Then I started experimenting a little bit more. Um, I found Fantasy Grounds. I believe I found Fantasy Grounds before it was even Fantasy Grounds 2. And I played in... Oh, uh, God. A Warhammer 40k Dark Heresy game. And I played it as a player, and Dark Heresy had... Uh, a community mod for the Dark Heart Heresy rule set. And I had a fucking blast. Great time. Played the me did a regular Warhammer FRP for a few sessions. Excellent time. I got into uh, a Castles and Crusades game on Fantasy Grounds 2. It was great. Here's my issues with Fantasy Grounds. Or Fantasy Grounds 2. Uh, doesn't have built-in voice, built-in video. I find that without the built-in voice, the built-in video, you have to use an external one, which isn't hugely detrimental, but I find that voice moves the game a lot quicker than uh, text chat. I tried to use Fantasy Grounds as a GM. I didn't want to buy uh, an adventure and obviously a store years ago wasn't as complete as it is now on the fantasy ground side. And my experience at the time is I probably needed something that resembled a programming language that I had no knowledge of to effectively uh, create your own module or adventure. It required too much of a time investment, too much of a time sink for me to, uh, to do properly. So, great for me as a player. Uh, not really usable for me on the side as a, as a game master or a DM. So then I moved on to Roll20. I supported a couple of VTTs on Kickstarter. And uh, one went nowhere, one funded, but then got merged into Roll20. And Roll20 initially was so close, yet broken. When you couldn't properly do a fog of war, you couldn't draw shapes. It was really, it had a lot of potential in the beginning. It wasn't quite reaching it. And then that first major update fixed so many of the problems. One problem that I don't know if it ever got fixed, we haven't used it in a while, is the inability or the 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 general fucked upiness of syncing the video and the voice. A lot of times we couldn't get the video to work, and with the voice, well, we could get a player in Vancouver, Canada who we could hear, but we couldn't hear the uh, the player in Florida, or the, player, or the player in Florida could hear three members of the group. I could hear six, but I missed one. Uh, that was lacking. However, the interface is nice and the fact that you can use as much or as little as you want. I've always been a fog of war and a point there on the map. Uh, minimalistic. I don't really use tokens, although I love tokens themselves. I, I rarely use them. And a couple of years ago, Roll20 reached out to me wanted to record a session of me running with my players, and I had to explain to them that you're really not going to see much of the software being used because I am a minimalist. So, there is that. Now you have a lot of excellent choices. D20 Pro looks very interesting. I'm going to give it a shake over the next week or two. Maybe just play with it on my end. But I was... Obviously, I was all psyched for VTT talk today. That's why you're getting this. But uh, I'll, I'll let you know when the uh, talk is rescheduled for, and uh, we'll play with it then. All right, folks. So thank you for listening. Uh, if you were listening to yesterday's episode, um, and we were talking about the drama or the, the news regarding uh, Zach S. or 
Zach Smith or Zach Sabbath or whichever name you're looking them up as. Um, today, uh, there's been a number of personalities within gaming that have distanced themselves, including Mike Merles and, and Ken Height. So, um, I, I don't know, like I said, based upon what I read from uh, Mandy Morbid, um, and my personal experience with dealing with that online, I find that she is credible. It doesn't mean that everything there is credible. I just happen to find the story to have enough legs. Uh, doesn't mean that you will. So if you are interested in uh, what's going on with that, just do a Google search. It's all over the place. Draw your own conclusions. Draw your make your own decisions on this. Um, I'm still open minded to some extent, but like I said, my own personal experiences with Zach and his way of dealing with people online and his way of controlling uh, interactions online. I find much of what Mandy posted to be credible in my eyes. Like I said, it's a matter of perspective a lot of times. On that note, hopefully tomorrow has no more updates on that. Maybe it just goes away. Uh, you know, who the hell knows? Be safe. Be well. We're getting a couple inches of snow tomorrow here in New York City, so... Uh, if you're getting in that snowstorm that's coming, be careful when driving. We all know how people overestimate their ability to drive in bad weather. I've seen it in my 20 years in law enforcement. So keep your your foot little not, not as heavy on the gas as you might normally, for your sake and everybody else's. Uh, God bless. Roll well, and I will talk with you all tomorrow. Ah! Look at that. Perfect phone call. Later, folks.